Notion recently launched Formulas 2.0, a new formula language completely rethought from scratch that allows us to do much more advanced calculations in Notion databases. In this video, we're going to analyze exactly one rather advanced application of Formulas 2.0 and how they can replace the use of rollups and multiple workarounds to calculate data from related databases within one single place. To analyze this workflow, we're going to use two databases from the grid CEO within. That's the template that you can find on my YouTube channel if you want to analyze it better. Let's go into the GTD system and apply this new Formulas 2.0 use case to the projects and tasks databases. These two databases are related with each other. So there is a relation property between projects and tasks. And for the use case of this video, we want to show only the tasks that are not done in a formula property without using any rollups or checkboxes. So let's get into one of the projects, for example. You will find the formula is already created here and I will walk you through exactly how that works. So to create a new formula in a Notion database, you can click add a property and as per usual, you will find the formula property type down below in the list. Once that is done, you can open the formula editor that is completely renewed or somewhat renewed. And in here, you can add your formula syntax. There are many new functions in the formulas 2.0 in Notion that also work with different data types compared to formulas 1.0, which were much more basic compared to this new revamped Notion formulas language. For this formula, we want to pull only tasks related to this project that are not done. So let's look at this. For this project, develop the next feature. I can see there are two tasks down here. One is true and one is doing. So that means we want to pull both tasks in this property right here. To do that, we can use the filter function. The filter function takes values from a list of values, meaning an array of values in data speech. So we can do filter, then open the parentheses. And the filter function, as you can see, it takes two arguments. It takes a list of values, aka an array, and a condition that is a filter that you want to apply to that list of values. So in this case, the first argument, that's the list, is the tasks. And that's the variable token that we can get from the list here. So if I delete that, I can do tasks. And here it shows up directly as a property because there is a property in this database that is called tasks. And that's the relation property that we want to use in this calculation. You can see here when I hover over tasks that is automatically selected for me, it tells me that it's a relation property and the data type is list. So that looks right because the filter function takes the list as the first argument. So we're going to select tasks and that's the token that Notion creates automatically, which means that's a property or a variable in your environment right now. Next up, we want to add a comma so that we move on to the second portion of the filter function. That is the condition. So what filter do you want to apply to that list of tasks? And in this case, we want to apply a filter that says only show those tasks where the status is not done. And to do that, we will use the current. The current value takes the values that are related to this project, in this case, two tasks. Because tasks is a relation property, it's a list. And so if we do not use current, it would output the entire list of tasks from the task database. But we want to filter for the current tasks for this page. And that's why we use current and I hit enter to select that. And then we'll do dot and the dot notation is a way to map specific properties from a list. So we take the task list and we want to map the status from the current values, from the related tasks to this project specifically. And we want to apply a filter that only show tasks where the status is not, that is exclamation mark equal, 
but it's the same to say as not equal to. Then we're going to open the inverted commas because that's a string that we want to pass here. Done. And that's the status from the task database we're going to pull. So, all in all, this formula says filter to show only the tasks where the status is not done. Only tasks related to this project. And we can hit done or control enter to finalize that formula. And you can see now these two tasks are showing up because they are both not done. And you can see that these values are clickable because they are a list of values. And so they come directly from the related task database. So if I click on task one, it will open up the left sidebar menu and the task one right here that is selected as you can see. I can also click on task two and it will switch to task two. Now let's assume we have moved task one to done and you can see that now the open tasks only shows task two and you can always click on it as per usual. If we add a new task, task three, that is going to show up on the open task formula. And that's how you can skip rollups and work around checkboxes to pull data from related databases and show them dynamically while at the same time retaining all the functions of a rollup with clickable values in Notion formulas 2.0. In addition to this, there are many more formulas that you can find by playing around with the formula editor here. You can see all of them right here, as well as in the documentation from the Notion Help Center that you can find in the description as well. For example, we can also style lists of values with cursive, bold, background colors, or text colors directly within the formula editor. This opens up many new opportunities in the Notion ecosystem to streamline workflows even more. And that is it for now, for this specific use case. If you want to find more information about Notion Formulas 2.0, you will find resources in the description, as well as more content that I will be posting out soon about this new release that changes fundamentally the structure of formulas within Notion and how you can build your workflows using fewer properties and achieving more streamlined ways of displaying data in your databases. Thanks for watching for now and see you in the next video.